The internet is broken. Don't worry, you can still connect to the internet, browse around, send email. All the technical aspects work just fine. It's what us as users have to give up in order to access the internet that's the problem. Popular websites have proven that they will choose profit over protecting your privacy as they are ready to sell your personal data without even thinking twice. The honest truth is that we've just become accustomed to this suckiness because we don't know that there's a better option, that we haven't really unlocked the true potential of what the internet could be. However, a new internet is being formed and it's being built around the principle of decentralization. In order to better understand exactly what decentralization is and how it can benefit us, we first have to look at the issues with the current status quo. Centralized networks can be defined as a network where communications, information, data must enter into and leave through a central hub, which is often in the form of private servers. This framework has led to a technically efficient internet, but it's also one that is always dependent on users sacrificing their privacy and personal information. If you want to access social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter, you're signing an agreement that essentially allows them to sell your information to third parties and use your content as well. Centralized entities are everywhere. Government, banks, and internet service providers have all shown that they will do anything to stay in control of your information. They don't want to lose this advantage that they've had for, had for so long. All of these entities controlling information leads to a lack of power for the individual or consumer. Information that we give up to these centralized powers often ends up being sold or compromised by hacks, which can lead to the very severe problem of identity theft. The call for increased tangible decentralization did not really gain steam until after the 2008 financial crisis, when a person or persons under the pseudonym of Satoshi Nakamoto published a white paper that first introduced blockchain technology, which also encompasses the principle of decentralization. A decentralized network differs greatly from a centralized one. Instead of one server or one party being put in charge of all of the data, decentralized networks operate on a peer-to-peer -peer basis where the user's computers communicate and interact directly. By operating on a peer-to-peer -peer basis, personal information is not shared as a third party never has access to that information. It just simply isn't needed. It essentially cuts out the middlemen by letting you bypass their involvement by working directly with another user. Benefits of decentralization are numerous. It allows you significantly more privacy, allows you to maintain your identity and reputation without worrying about what that third party is doing with it. Cutting out the middlemen also saves the producer and consumer money. And the most important thing that decentralization can provide, freedom. Hi. The freedom to use the internet without the caveat of having to give up your personal information that could fall into the wrong hands. The internet has a long way to go before it becomes completely decentralized, but it's undeniable that this trend is already starting. And that's our video on decentralization. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to leave us a like. Also subscribe to check out all of our other cool videos that are upcoming. Also, if you have any questions about decentralization, any topics you want to discuss, throw those down below in the comments section. This has been Jeremy with Blockchain WTF. I'll see you next time.